Welcome to worship today. I'm Pastor Eric Schaefer. We are glad that you're worshiping with us. We are Grace Lutheran Church, where we are celebrating Christ's love and joyfully sharing it in word and service with the world. Today we continue in our Advent series of dramatic stories which tell the gospel message. Today we'll hear from Mike as he retells Joseph's story and the struggle he faced and the way God worked in and through his life. Also a reminder that on December 13th, our youth will be leading a worship service. I'm excited as they've put a lot of hard work into the service, and I'm looking forward to sharing it with all of you in a few weeks. Since our script is copyrighted, we're not able to share it publicly. So to view the worship service, you'll need to email the email address below after December 7th to receive a link to be able to watch the service. The link you'll receive will only be active after December 13th, so hold on to the link until after the 13th. More communication about that will come out shortly. That's all the announcements we have for today, so we begin our time of worship. Wait for the Lord. 
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved. Amen. Holy One, we confess that we are not awake for you. We are not faithful in using your gifts. We forget the least of our siblings. We do not see your beautiful image in one another. We are infected by sin that divides your beloved community. Open our hearts to your coming. Open our eyes to see you in our neighbor. Open our hands to serve your creation. Amen. Beloved, we are God's children, and Jesus, our beloved, opens the door to us. Through Jesus, you are forgiven. By Jesus, you are welcome. In Jesus, you are called to rejoice. Let us live in the promises prepared for us from the foundation of the world. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. By your merciful protection, awaken us to the threatening dangers of our sins, and keep us blameless until the coming of your new day, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Gospel of reading is from Matthew, the first chapter. Now the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, took place in this way. When his mother Mary has been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to the public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel from the Lord appeared to him in his dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relationships with her until she had born a son, and he named him Jesus, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Your bags and travel on. No. 
thought they'd done. This is how God calls His people, losing all because of one. God, it was who said to Moses, save your people, part the sea. calls his people liberating what they should God it was who said to Joseph down your tools and take your wife God it was who said to Mary in your womb I'll start my life Carpenter and country maiden, leaving town and trade and skills. This is how God calls his people, moving them through what he wills. Christ it was who said to Matthew, leave your book and follow me. Christ it was who said to Martha, listen first, then make the tea. Civil servants and housekeepers changing places at a cost. This is how Christ calls his disciples, finding those he knew. Once unknown whom we revere, God calls us to share His purpose, starting now and starting here. So we celebrate His calling, so we rise and praise His choice, as we pray that through this company, God will act and Hi, everybody. Pastor Matthew here. I'm happy to bring you this message on what is the first Sunday of Advent, the 29th of November. Advent's a time when we get ready for Jesus and his birth. And a couple people had to prepare extra hard and um, think a lot about Jesus' birth, and they're his parents, Mary and Joseph. And today I want us to talk a little bit about Joseph. So imagine you're Joseph, and you get the news from God that your wife is going to have a baby. And that baby is not going to be just yours and hers, but that baby is going to be God's baby. Oh my gosh, God's baby in my house? What a hard thing to prepare for. Now let's make a list of things that you need if you have a new baby coming, especially if it's your first baby. What kind of things do you think we need for a new baby? Well, we probably need diapers, wipes, um, cream for the baby's skin, clothes, towels, soap, a place for the baby to sleep, like maybe a bassinet or a crib, Lots of blankets to wrap the baby up in. Um, things for the parents, like medicine for the mom after she gives birth to the baby. Medicine for the dad after he stays up late with the baby crying. Lots of things like that. There's a long list of any of you. I, you were all babies once, I think. 
And maybe you even are an older sibling in your family, so you have younger kids at your house, and maybe you've had a baby at your house before. It is a big challenge, and it's really hard to get ready. So God was taking some time to kind of coach Joseph on how to get ready for this baby to be coming, what to say, how to act. And guess what? Joseph listened. So during this Advent season, how can we get ready for the baby Jesus to come? Well, one of the ways is to read the Bible and think about all the things that were going on in the life of Mary and Joseph leading up to Jesus' birth. Another way is to pray to God and ask God to help us understand this wonderful and miraculous birth of this little baby 2,000 years ago. Maybe you've got an Advent calendar at your house so you can read a Bible story each day and think about how God is coming. And maybe your Advent calendar even has candy in it. Sometimes they do. But in any case, during this season, the very beginning of Advent, I invite you and anybody at your house to do some things to get ready for the birth of Jesus. See, that's why we celebrate Christmas. Yes, we like giving gifts, but the main reason we celebrate Christmas is because God's son Jesus was born to Joseph and to Mary. Oh boy, that's a big deal and a big story and want a birthday and a birth that we have been celebrating for 2,000 years. And you get to be part of that story and to celebrate right along with the rest of the world. I'm so glad that we're together. I wish we could be together in person, but this is second best and it's pretty good. So um, as you get ready for Advent, maybe send me a note and tell me how you're getting ready for the birth of Jesus at your house. Um, until then, we look forward to all this time together and the children's Christmas program, which is coming in just two weeks. I'm super excited. Thanks, everybody. Let's pray together. And you can repeat after me. I'll go slow and pause. Dear God, thank you for sending your son, whose name is Jesus, into the world. Thank you for his dad, Joseph, and his mom, Mary, just like they had to get ready, help us to get ready for his birth again. Amen. All right. Good to be with you. See you again soon. Bye. Oh, hi. My name is Yosef ben Eli, or as you would say, Joseph, the son of Eli. But perhaps you know me better as Joseph, the husband of Mary, who is the mother of Jesus. You notice that I didn't call myself the father of Jesus, and that is both my greatest sadness and my greatest joy. Let me explain. Mary and I lived in the village of Nazareth, which is in the northern part of Israel. Israel is only a little larger than the state of Maryland where you live. From Nazareth to the capital city, Jerusalem, it's about 62 miles. It's about a two to three day trip, depending on how many times we have to stop for a break. It seems like a fairly small country, and yet it is one of the most heavily traveled lands. Many roads lead through my country to Africa roads that were built by the Romans as they marched through and claimed ownership of my people's land. That took place more than 60 years ago. It's hard to believe. Even though Israel is occupied, we have to try and live our lives the best we can. And that includes earning a living, marrying, having children, and raising a family. Nazareth isn't bothered much by the Romans. We follow the rules for the most part so they don't harass us as long as we pay our taxes and obey their laws. I earn enough as a carpenter to support our family. It's in our family. My father was a carpenter and I was one too. Ah, Mary, I thought I was the most blessed of men to win her father's agreement to our marriage. We were young and in love. She was a young woman of beautiful character and devoted to Yahweh our God. That mattered more than anything. So everything was going well 
until the day my world fell apart. While I was working at the shop, Mary had taken the opportunity to visit her cousin Elizabeth, who lived in Hebron. Mary had heard that Elizabeth had miraculously become pregnant in old age and wanted to support her. She was there three months, and it was when she returned that she dropped the bombshell. Mary was also pregnant. And worse, she claimed an angel had told her she was going to have a baby and God would be the father. Talk about the most outrageous attempt to cover up for your immoral behavior. I was dumbfounded, outraged, and devastated. Here we were not yet married. We had not been together, and she was pregnant. How could she betray me like this? A woman I thought to be the model of integrity. Someone I had put all my hopes in, and I was engaged to her, and now she was pregnant with a child that was not mine. I decided to make sure that I was not responsible for the child that was not mine. I loved Mary, yes, but the shame of this was more than I could bear. Love can only cover so much. So I decided to have our engagement canceled, which is just the same as getting divorced in your terms. After all, I had not sinned and I had Moses' law on my side. She could be thankful that I didn't expose her publicly. At least I kept her from being stoned to death. You can probably imagine the rather honest discussion that I had with Mary. The tears flowed long and hard, and not just on her side. But she was in the wrong, and I was in the right, and that was all that mattered. I knew I was making the right decision. How wrong could I be? I could barely sleep that night. I was so devastated. I was furious. I reasoned. I justified myself. But there was also a knot inside me that wouldn't go away. And I didn't know what to do about it. On the one hand, I loved Mary. On the other, I felt utterly betrayed. Then again, there was the knowledge that up to now, I had known Mary to be someone who would not lie. I could not reconcile these conflicting feels. I must have slept through, even in the midst of turmoil, because I had the most incredible dream. I dreamt that an angel calling himself Gabriel came to me, the same angel that Mary said had appeared to her. Gabriel said that Mary had told me the truth. This truly was God's son growing in her, and I was not to be afraid to take her as my wife. Not only that, we were to name the child Jesus because he would be the savior of our people. Suddenly, all my uncertainties were challenged. When I woke up, I was dumbfounded and ashamed at my behavior and unbelief. I had been truly humbled and I needed to talk to Mary right away. Tears flowed again, but this time of love and joy. You might think it was happy ever after from then on. Far from it. As Mary's pregnancy became obvious, people in the village realized that Mary had to have become pregnant while visiting her cousin Elizabeth. We quickly became the talk of the town. Mary's parents wanted to send her off to Elizabeth again to hide her pregnancy. I said no. I had some rights because in our culture, engagement was as binding as marriage. I would protect her. People began avoiding me or stopping me their, their conversation when I approached. I could see the looks of disgust on their faces. The work tapered off. I was paying a big price for supporting Mary, but I loved her and it was a price I was willing to pay. We both rested sure in God's promise spoken through the angel. There was a great plan that we could not have even dreamed up a greater love than the birth of a child. God coming to earth to be with us. I would get to see God with my own eyes, love in the flesh. We would be the parents that be responsible for raising God's son. What a burden and what a joy. A flood of emotions came over me. I realized that Jesus was the promised Messiah. God kept the promise made long ago. 
Jesus will show us a love beyond anything we could have imagined. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to finish this project before we head off to the census. Remember, though, I'm told that this child will fulfill the prophecies and show us how to live and rescue us from our own self-made pitfalls. This is truly God's love for us. Now let us join together in our statement of faith the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we enter our time of prayers of intercession, our response for each prayer will be, Your mercy is great. God of power and might, tear open the heavens and come quickly to us in this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. We pray for the ministries we share in Christ's name. Open our hearts to your call for justice, peace, and healing. Attune us to the needs of the world as you draw near. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for this planet in need of restoration, for devastated habitats, polluted waters, thawing ice, blazing fires, swelling floods, and long-lasting droughts. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. 
We pray for all people who care for others in our community and around the world. Fill them with compassion and the power to respond with justice for those who are oppressed. With welcome for those who are excluded and with relief for those who suffer. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for people who are in crisis as the seasons change for those without homes facing severe weather, for those who are unemployed or underemployed, and for those in poverty or facing food insecurity, like those who need the resources of cool and pads and feed my starving children. Relieve their burdens, sustain their bodies, ease their minds, let us help. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We pray for the people in our families and congregation who live with depression, anxiety, chronic pain, addiction, and other invisible illnesses, especially those who we name now either aloud or in our hearts. Ease their suffering and support them when they struggle. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We give thanks for the lives and witness of those who died while waiting for justice, peace, or healing, those whose names we know and those whose names are known only to you. Sustain all who yearn for the completion of your redeeming work. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Draw us near, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We take the time now within this service to reflect on all that God has blessed us with each and every day. And out of gratitude for all that God has given to us, we give back to the church and its mission and the many various ministries that we continue to offer here and offer to others around the world. So thank you for continuing to support our ministries here at Grace Lutheran Church whether you are financially contributing by check or by PayPal, through your Realm account, through stock options, other financial institution options, or using our texting program to support the ministries that we have that continue to help those in need, especially in this season. Let us continue with our offering prayer. Let us pray. God of all goodness, generations have turned to you, gathered around your table, and shared your abundant blessings. Number us among them, that as we gather these gifts from your abundance and give thanks for your rich blessings, we may feast upon your very self and care for all that you have made through Jesus Christ, our sovereign and servant. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. When he given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it for his disciples to eat, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also, after supper, he took the cup. When he given thanks, he gave it for his disciples to drink, saying, Take and drink, this is my blood of the new covenant, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, do this in remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. 
The cup and wafer that you have before you now is the same that was blessed here on our altar or over here in our coolers um, on this day um, earlier in the week. So you'll be receiving these gifts of the body and blood of Christ. And if you're in a group, you may offer them to each other, saying the body of Christ broken for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Um, if you're on your own, you may just partake. And this is a good time to pause the video as you do that. Lord Jesus, in this simple meal you have set a banquet. Sustain us on the journey, strengthen us to care for the least of your beloved children, and give us glad and generous hearts as we meet you on the way. Amen. May the God of all creation, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved, who strengthens us for service, give you reason to rejoice and be glad. The blessing of God, our sovereign, our savior, and spirit be with you today and always. Amen. Beloved of God, be at peace and love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.